Hi everybody, welcome to another Get Ready With Me Q&A video. I have so many questions today. I'm not complaining. It's really, really awesome. Thank you so much. Got them on my Instagram and I got them on my YouTube channel as well from this video. Today, what we're going to do is we are going to get ready with some of my holy grail items. I'm so obsessed with my niece, BB. So yeah, let's just get straight into it. Can I just say that playing with makeup is so much more fun now when I have something pretty to hold. Let's get straight into the first question. NSMD Hyalux. How do you determine you will never get the bag in the future again? I'm afraid I will have seller's remorse. She was referring to one of my videos. I think this is my seller's video where I sold my LV Montaigne bag. I have experienced seller's remorse before and I actually have some bags that I want to repurchase. One of the ways that I can tell myself don't have seller's remorse is to tell myself that there's always another bag. There is always a new thing that will come that is maybe even more spectacular than the one before. Another thing that I've learned about selling is to give myself more time before I sell or jump on that selling feeling. Sometimes you get into this zone of, I want to sell, I don't want it in my collection anymore, it's not being used. That kind of feeling sometimes can be escalated by this feeling of being impatient. So I talked about it in one of my videos, Lessons in Selling. I'll link that down below. I feel like nowadays I'm better at it. Once I sell something now, I really have done the KonMori method and let it go. So I hope, okay, in the future, I don't get any more seller's remorse of all my foundations. And I have a lot. This La Mer one is my favorite. Every time I put this, I look pretty good. <laughs> I don't have any primer on or I'm not even using my Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream because honestly, that's not holy grail. Like I can just put my moisturizer and go straight in with my foundation. I don't need to put the Charlotte Tilbury. I feel like putting the Charlotte Tilbury is just an extra layer to give me more of a glow. But this foundation actually doesn't need like the Charlotte Tilbury or doesn't need a primer. It can look good on its own. What I like about this foundation is it goes on like a moisturizer. It doesn't feel heavy on the skin and it has such a beautiful finish that in fact, it even looks better as the day wears on. From Dim Dal, just a thought, you're a seasoned YouTuber and have a duet live stream channel. Doesn't that skill set or experience help you in your phone and video conference sessions as you would not have camera fear. I for one have to stick a post-it note on my camera Oh, computer camera, just in case I accidentally show my face and background during the conference. <laughs> Being on YouTube has given me more confidence and yes, more experience to talk directly at the camera because I think when you don't have that experience, you tend to look at yourself so you can see the eye line is slightly different. I do have a little bit more camera skills, if you want to say that. And But however, I still stick something on my laptop. I put a little sticker that is like my Hello Kitty sticker. It's Doraemon. I put a sticker right on the camera so that I don't accidentally turn it on. Sometimes it, it happens, right? You forget or you're preoccupied. Even for me, I still do it. And sometimes even for YouTube, I some, sometimes I'm talking, 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 and I forgot to press record. It happens, okay? Or the audio's off or anything. It's These are all technical issues. Even if you're experienced, sometimes you can just forget. Even for duet live streaming, I'm also picking up new skills. For example, there is this lag time between uh, maybe I'm talking and Amy's talking and there's sudden an interference. And I also need to not talk when Amy is talking. Sometimes I get really excited, I want to say something, but maybe I'm laughing at the background, but that will interrupt the sound that comes through during the live stream. So I've got to laugh a little bit like, <laughs> rather than laugh out loud because it, it is an interruption for her and also for the audience. So little things like that is also useful when I do video conferences or phone conferences because when you have a phone conference with let's say four or five people, sometimes you want to just like giggle a little bit or laugh or say yes, actually you shouldn't because it interrupts the conversation flow because of noise and all that. Let me put my holy grail lip balm. This is the Clinique lip balm. If you followed me for a while, I have been talking about this for years. It is the best. Pretty pricey, but really good stuff for the lips. Let's get some concealer on and don't really talk about this very often, but honestly, if you're looking for a really, really good concealer, this clean, uh, not clinic, this Clay de Po concealer is super good. It is very, very rich, 
full coverage a little bit goes a long way the only reason i don't show it so often is because this color is a little bit dark for me right now but since we are doing a holy grail video this concealer what i do is i use my finger because there's a bit of warmth to the finger if you put it on it's a little bit dry but the warmth on your finger and the heat from your body helps it get a little bit more moist and a little bit more easy to blend it is a bit dark right now so i would definitely want to buy a lighter color but this is awesome if you have zits like i've got a big one right here or like redness this is super super full coverage and you you do need to blend it a little bit but it lasts the whole day it's pricey but you get so much product and i've been using this a lot when i first got it I still can use this but mainly on my face to cover redness but under my eyes, it's not so suitable because it is a little bit too yellow and too dark right now. Next from Ivy Lim, I finally checked it out. The Valextra Eye Side. I'll put a picture here. I actually thought this bag looks so much like the Mona bag. I think that's how you pronounce it. Somebody correct me because I say Monet, the painter, but it should be Mona. It looks very similar. From pictures, it looks very classy. It looks simple, understated. It has every thing that i actually like in a very simple bag the only thing is i need to try the bag i need to wait i like carry it just from pictures it looks nice you have to carry it you have to wear it on your body you have to try the strap it looks a little thin so i don't know if the bag is too heavy and then that strap will dig into my shoulder like the space in the bag looks a little tight because of its shape that it's sort of like this so Things can go in, but you have to adjust it because it's bigger at the bottom. Probably need to see it in stir. It's not a really cheap bag. I thought it was more of like the higher end contemporary brand prices, but it's pretty it's pretty up there in the price. This little tool hack was recommended by Christy C A A A A A. She recommended that I spray my setting spray onto a big brush or a puff and then actually dab it on my skin. Instead of spraying it directly on my face where it gets into my eyes, into my nostrils, onto my lips. She said to spray it on a brush and then dab it on. So I'm going to try it and let's see how that goes. Okay, I can see everything there. Now I'm going to dab it. Oh, yeah, really lightly. I'm just dabbing it. I'm not really pressing the brush, just the tips of the bristles. Oh my gosh, this is a good tip. You know, one of the things that I don't like about setting sprays or any kind of mist is that when I spray it, I get some on my face, right? But everything floats everywhere and sometimes it gets on the floor and all that. I, especially when if the setting spray has a little bit of oil or moisture or something that is like a bit greasy and I'll get it everywhere and it kind of bugs me a little bit because then you have to wipe the floor, you have to wipe the mirrors, you have to wipe everything. But this is so... This is so ladylike. <laughs> so I know I've got a little bit of space here. What I could do is I could add a little bit more and just be really precise about that setting spray. Girl, what an awesome tip. Thank you. Next question from Rach Thomas. What do I think of this Chanel CC Day backpack? I'll put a picture right here. It is so cute. It is like Chanel's version of the Palm Springs backpack, except it's more, you know, up there. <laughs> it's cute. I love the back pocket. Sorry, the front pocket. I love the zip. Definitely so gorgeous. Anything with Chanel is gorgeous. I love it. It is super cute. I think it's a great size and caviar leather. Definitely almost indestructible, right? <laughs> Jelly Poles, you got three questions and let's do yours before I move on to my next. Let's do the eyes after this. Okay, why do I live between Singapore and Malaysia? I actually am Malaysian, but I'm a PR in Singapore. I've been there for many, many years and that's because my family is in Malaysia. I my whole family is here. My mom is here. My dad is here. So I travel between both countries. And how old are you? Because you can't tell. I hope you think I look young. Okay, girl, you better be thinking I look young. I am reaching 40. Okay, I'm almost 40. And I think I look 40 right now with all this, you know, libelle folds. What is it called? Labial folds. Things that, you know, when you lose collagen and your face starts to fall forward. Oh my God. Yeah, that's happening to me right now. So yeah, I'm almost 40. And my favorite and least favorite bag. Favorite bag is easy. It's my Chanel camera case. I always talk about this. My least favorite. Now, this is hard because you, you know, you love all your bags, right? 
I love all my bags. I think it's gonna be a contender between, some people don't consider it as a bag, some people consider it as a bag. It is my Chanel Walk. The reason is it's a little bit too small, but it's probably an SLG. So if you wanna say bag, I think I'm gonna pick mm, my Celine mini luggage. And I'm just gonna say the least favorite just because it is very heavy. It's very large, it's very heavy. I haven't been using it, but it's not that I don't like it. It has so much memory because I bought it while we were in um, Europe with my best friend. So it's actually pretty favorite as well. But you know, if I'm just saying from usage and functionality, I feel like that bag is a little bit heavy for me. Let's do my eyeshadow because LV Coffee Lover is asking me if what is my favorite eyeshadow. When I saw your question, babe, I <laughs> was really sitting down and talking to myself, what is my favorite eyeshadow palette? I was tossing between Pat McGrath's eyeshadow palette and Natasha Denona's, but I came to the conclusion that I prefer Natasha Denona just because her price point is definitely better in terms of the quantity, but she has really good formulas. Pat McGrath is very editorial and it's hard to use it for every day. Her Divine Rose palette is probably the best for every day, but honestly, this this would be my favorite eyeshadow palette from Natasha, I don't want to like blind you all. Natasha Denona, her gold palette is my favorite because it has so many colors that is actually very wearable. You take away all this gold stuff, these are quite neutral, but you can amp it up with a variety of golds and a little bit of blues. I honestly haven't tried the blues. Maybe one day we'll do a video and try the blues, but I've seen so many eye looks from this. You think, right, gold palette, like, ah, uh, what, all gold? So versatile. So we'll use this today. I take away all my eyeshadow palettes, the small ones, the big ones, I think I can be very happy with just this one palette. And because it's holy grail as well, I'm only gonna use two brushes for my eyeshadow. These are just staple eyeshadow brushes. Let's start with this one. This is from Real Techniques. I love this, the base shadow brush. I think I have like four of these because I use them every single day. Like why do I bother with my other eyeshadow brushes? Because this is just good enough. I'm gonna start with the color Aria. Put that all over my eyelid. This color is really pigmented. I'm just using this like a base. I started at the middle of my eyelid and then work my way into my non-existent crease. Because I have pretty bulgy looking eyes. Like my eyes, are, I don't have like an eye socket. My eyes are not set deep. They are set like they're bulging out. So I do have a crease. Asian eyes are a little bit more set deep. So then they don't actually have that crease bone. Like this part of the bone is not sticking out. So for me, the only reason I have so many lines and like a crease at my crease bone is because my eyes bulge out a little bit. So it looks like I don't have typical, you know, Asian eyes. The one that's like a, like almost like a slit, not the typical one. Just that my eyes bulge out. It's not a good thing, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna go in with the color Log. It's a deeper brown color and I'm just gonna focus that on the outer side, like here, just to give it a little bit of depth. I used to have a really fluffy MAC brush, sort of like this Isom G34 brush, but I prefer the MAC one because this one, it, it's good, but it just feels a little scratchy on the skin. I do like the MAC one, but the MAC one that I have right now is 222. I don't know the number of the fluffier one. I'll, I'll link it down below, but what you need is a big fluffy brush to sort of like soften the edges because, you know, with eyeshadow, especially if you're not a professional like me, I get it everywhere, so I need a big fluffy brush to yeah, just blend out the edges so that it doesn't look so harsh. Or if I overdid it, this can help smoothen it out. So I'm gonna go in with the color Kava and I'm gonna put that all over my eyelid, focusing it in the middle, because it's a shimmer. If you don't like your shimmer like falling all over, I would recommend you use a wet brush. So I'm just tapping it on first. What I do is instead of uh, spraying my brush and then going into the eyeshadow because I don't want to get setting spray into the eyeshadow, it'll create hard pen. So now I've got a glitter on my eyes, I will spray my brush and I will go straight onto my lid like this. And it creates this almost wet look on the eyes with that glitter. It's really pretty. My holy grail eyeliner, this is MAC Teddy 
had this for a long time. I keep using it, I keep repurchasing it, and I'm just using any pencil brush. The one that I'm using is from Refa, and just use that to smudge it out. Another question from LV Coffee Lover Do you cuss like a sailor? <laughs> I used to, okay, I used to be really bad. All the bad words from in English that I would be like F bombs here, B bombs there, everything is just so bad. But now I still do use the F bomb. You know, I'm not i I'm not gonna say, oh no, I don't curse at all. Yeah, I do. Okay, I drop the F bombs, especially when I'm with my colleagues. I'm like, F this, F that, it's really bad. But I also really picked up cursing in Chinese. So if my Singaporean people will know the K-N-N, C-C-B, C-C-B, all these little short forms for it, but they're really bad, okay? They're really, really, really bad. Favorite eyelash curler. The only one that doesn't clip the flesh of my eyelids. I had to pick one mascara, and this one is really, really good. This is the Voluminous Lash Paradise from L'Oreal. Next question from Monique31. Has the pandemic changed your views on luxury bags? It changed a bit for me. Truth be told, it has. Uh, I still love my luxury bags, but I'm looking at it from a different lens right now. Just like, do I want to spend so much on bags moving forward? I mean, for me, I have a very big collection already. So adding more bags into my collection, uh, I'm putting more thought into it. It doesn't mean that I won't buy bags, I will. But what has changed for me right now is selling my luxury bags. Because when I look at my collection right now, I don't feel like I want to sell my collection at the moment. I feel like I really want to keep everything that I have for a long time. I think before this pandemic, I was going through like decluttering or purging and all. Right now, I just feel like I'm very happy with my collection. I actually want to see me use them for a long, long, long time instead of just buying and then selling and then buying and selling. It was never my intention to buy and sell. Like, I was in a little bit of that rut because I guess I wanted to get new things, but now I'm holding back on the new things. And now that I look at my collection, I'm like, hmm, what would it be like if I could hold, say, my multi pochette for 20 years or something like that? I just feel like I want to keep my collection for a long time and really, really get a lot of use out of it. Before the pandemic, I was getting into looking at the trendier items, but now I think that has changed. NTPLL, the best leather for an Hermes Kelly. Oh, this is a tough one. It really depends on what you like. For me personally, I think the Kelly looks good in a Cellier and in an Epsom. I don't know, just the something about the cut and the design and the whole look of the Kelly. I feel like the Kelly looks better structured and structured would mean Epsom, which is the, I guess, the cheaper alternative. If you could afford it, definitely the exotic leathers are stunning <laughs> for a Kelly. Let's answer two more from Kimion and we'll get some bronzer on the face. Can we get a room tour apartment someday? Someday, okay? Actually, there's nothing. What you see, this is like the prettiest part of the room. The rest of the room is just like, cannot see, okay? <laughs> I've got a ladder there, running board over there. It's it's not pretty. So this is like the prettiest part of the room. <laughs> Our other question is, am I considering the Cartier JUC? The answer is yes. I went to Cartier last couple of weeks ago and to check out the price just to get an idea of what I am committing to. It's a lot of money and oh my gosh, I'm going to commit to getting it right now. And since my mindset with luxury bags have changed, you know, I am going to still be buying bags, just that not so many of the trendier bags. I feel like I'm going to be putting money aside now, not feel, I am putting money aside now to buy the JUC. I have a little bit of, you know, timing issue, but yeah, I am definitely getting that in my collection. Let's get some bronzer on the face and let's use this one. The Sun Chaser one from Thrive Cosmetics, the Blur and Sculpt Bronzing Powder in Rhea. It's, it's a pretty neutral bronzer. It's not too cool tone, not too warm tone. It's just a nice middle. And that's the color. Because some bronzers are too warm and like pulling a bit of orange. But I feel like this is just the right tone. Don't really hear much about Thrive Cosmetics anymore. So that kind of worries me because if they <laughs> decide to, you know, pack up and go, then I don't know what kind of bronzer am I might be able to get this. Maybe I should get a backup just in case. 
a highlighter for every day and something that I know will look good. This highlighter from Laura Mercier, the Matte Radiance Bronze Powder Highlight 01. I've had this for a long time and it is actually like a baked powder but what's really amazing about it is it's very light. You can't go wrong with this powder. Compared to some powders, maybe they're too glittery, they're too... Uh, bright or just too much that you need to blend this one so good so easy Oof. and finally this is my holy grail blush this is Warm Soul from MAC. This is the original Warm Soul. They reformulated this and it looks nothing like the original Warm Soul. This is like so old. I refuse to get rid of it because it is the most stunning color. In my other video where I talk about all my Holy Grail items, I actually found a dupe for this. It's a pretty good dupe, okay? So I will share that in the other video. blush has so much character it's got a bit of mauve it's a bit of pink it's got a bit of golden shimmer it's so beautiful i don't know why they decided to reformulate it the reformulated version is more peachy and is really glittery it's almost like nars orgasm with a bit of warm soul in it it's so not nice this original one they need to bring it back Catherine csl what is one makeup item that you cannot live without just one it's gonna be a lipstick but a sheer one which i will show you it's my holy grail like if i give up everything i'm assuming lip balm is not makeup that's like skincare okay but lipstick all right lipstick would be one we'll talk about that at the end hello lover xoxo what do you like and hate most about instagram i like the fact that it's pictures and it's like a record of the things that you've done i love looking back and i like the ability to throw back you know just see like wow four years ago this is what i look like so it's kind of like a photo diary i do enjoy that what i hate most about instagram is the the pressure to keep up so this is a few perspectives because for me my instagram is very tightly coupled to my youtube so for my handbags and all, I think if you're talking about my personal Instagram, I don't really care. Like there's no need to keep up. But I'm only talking about what I hate most about my uh, YouTube version of my Instagram where there's this pressure to keep up in terms of how the photo looks like, how I need to set up the photo, things like that. I feel like that's so unnecessary. Like I just want to take a photo, let it be and whatever but you can't i can't so i i don't really like that for youtube instagram and the opposite end as well when i look at some photos i feel like i don't like that it's almost like the fakeness of it because you don't know what you're looking at is the real thing so this part of the instagram i I actually don't really like which is why i personally i have a personal instagram where i share whatever i share me but with this version of instagram which is my youtube instagram there is this need to keep up which is why you can see i don't post very much because i'm like oh my gosh there's so much work into it and when i see people do it i feel like wow what went into it just to put this photo up and how much of it is put on if you yeah so i don't know if i'm answering it right but that's how i feel with this version of my instagram so that yeah, i don't really enjoy that part of it indie xyh what face wash do you use i actually am using the neutrogena salicylic acid it's like an acne wash right now and i use that in the morning just to clean my face and at night i use a kiehl's facial wash wawa azilan how do you fight the inner battle lust and financial constraint my struggle oh my gosh i'm going to be filming a video right after this talking about this particular problem so watch out for that but basically i have a few tips that I put in place to fight this inner battle. It's really hard to fight. Next question, you want to be anonymous. When is a good time to buy a bag that you've been eyeing on, but you're not ready to take the plunge because of the recent price increases? So I would say any time now since the price has increased and any time before the next price increase since you've been eyeing the bag already. Like if you have saved for it you can afford it it doesn't put you in any financial situation a difficulty then any time is a good time because the price has already gone up 
Clara Zilla, how do you keep track of your old makeup items so you know when to toss it? I lose track. Honestly, girl, I lose track as well. <laughs> Wait, hang on. This blush is so old that I should be tossing it, but I won't do it because I won't. So I don't really toss my makeup items, especially the powder ones. Maybe if I put it on and I get a bit of a rash, then I'll toss it or I don't want it anymore. Yeah, there are some people who like label it, put the expiry date there. I don't really follow that. We've got two more questions. So why don't I put my lipstick on and we'll answer those two. This is like my holy grail right now. I know it's premature because I just got this, but I am obsessed with the Shantakai lip veil lip chic formula it is the most hydrating lipstick ever if i had to get rid of all my lipsticks this would be the one that i would keep and this would be your answer girl uh catherine you were asking me which is the one item this would be like my lipstick this color honeysuckle i know it's limited edition but they probably do come up with similar tones this is such an oh feels so good on the lips so hydrating. This will be the one makeup item that I will keep forever and ever because I hate dry lips. Though I don't use a lot of lip balm and I don't use, I don't drink enough water. But if I continue that kind of lifestyle, don't drink enough water and don't use lip balm, this would be one that would rescue my lips. Finish up this video with the last two questions. Colin Ma, there is no bag that appeals to you, but you want to get a bag so badly. Have you been there before? Yes, I have. When you have that itch, you want to spend money, you just want to buy something. Let me tell you, those are one of the most dangerous times because then every bag just looks like you want something. You know what I mean? Like you just want to buy something. Song Yu Choi, have you owned a very vibrant colored bag? How was it? Yeah, I've owned red bags, my Lindy, my Kelly. I've owned my Montaigne, uh, LV Montaigne bag. I've owned very bright colored bags. And I also own very colorful bags. My multicolor bag is very colorful. My LV Valisette luggage bag is also very colorful. If you're asking me how was it as in how to use it. My lesson with the full one colored bag is I think I'm not ready for a red bag. You need to check your lifestyle to see whether you it suits you and you're daring to wear it. So those are all the questions from Instagram and YouTube. Thank you so much. Next week's Get Ready With Me, I will also be answering questions so you can leave it here or you can put a question in my Instagram. I will always post a story, ask me a question and you can Go there, put a question, and I will collect them for this video. If there's any hack that you want me to try next week, let's do that as well. All right, so I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you liked it, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell as well. Everybody, please take care, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!